Good morning, everybody. Much like Anna Williams, I am stroking my big bazooka this morning because we just had the most exciting content reveal for Tekken that I've ever seen. Much like we were expecting, Tekken 7 Season 2 was revealed at EVO, but the sheer scope of the season and the amount of content that it's going to bring us was a lot larger than at least I was expecting, and it's great news. There's a lot of stuff on the way, so we're going to talk about all of it, but before we jump into that, I actually have another really cool announcement. Um, Something that sort of went under the radar during the last few days is that they revealed the location of the of the next EVO tournament, EVO Japan 2019, which is going to be in February of next year, and it's in Fukuoka, Japan, as opposed to Tokyo. This is significant for me because it happens to be where I live, and if the event is going to be held where I think it's going to be held, there's one really good venue for an event that size. Uh, it's basically a 10 minute walk from my house, so it's kind of crazy. I really don't have an excuse this time, so I'm gonna be at EVO. I haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna compete or whether or not I'm gonna just hang out with friends and then maybe, you know, hit the arcades and play casuals and just have fun with it, but we'll see what happens. Uh, if you're gonna travel for EVO next year and you've thought about coming to Japan, I can really recommend this city. It's big and beautiful, there's great nightlife, and it's just a really cool place overall, so uh, maybe I'll see you there and I'm really looking forward to it because it's my first chance to sort of interact a little bit with the community since making my channel and getting a little bit more involved with the uh, Tekken community. But enough about that, let's talk about uh, Season 2. I'm going to talk about the uh, new moves and sort of mechanics that they showed us before I talk about the new characters. Uh, the first new thing we saw that looked, sig uh, looked significant was uh, a new mechanic where you can bounce your opponent off the wall and sort of reset your wall combo. It's kind of like a re-wall splat, which is something that we've seen before, but it's just been uh, implemented as a more of an intentional mechanic, and it works from uh, a longer range than it has before. This looks really cool. It's going to be, uh, you know, very dramatic in combos. The one reason it has me a little bit worried is that we already have a couple of characters in this game who do a lot of damage with their combos, especially if they have access to the wall. And one of the issues that we had with Tekken Tag 2, the reason it wasn't as well received as Tekken 7, is that the combo damage was a little bit too high. And there needs to be a, a pretty specific ratio of a damage in a single combo uh, and uh, the life bar of a character for a round of Tekken to feel uh, fun to play. And so maybe this will... Uh, bring a couple of those combos uh, out of proportion, but we don't know. We can't even say if it's something that all characters are going to have access to or whether or not you're going to you know, get full combos after the bounce. Um, there was at least one example where after the bounce you got a full wall splat, so it looks like it, but we'll have to see what happens, uh, and it's going to be one of those fun parts to explore as it comes out. But I can say that if you can bounce somebody off of a breakable wall and then break that wall and keep going with your combo, you can reset it twice. So there's going to be some pretty crazy uh, combo videos coming out of like, you know, Geese's stage, for example. Uh, so that's something to look forward to. The next thing we saw was a new Lars mechanic. It looks as though Lars is going to be able to transition directly uh, from uh, dynamic entry into silent entry. He does that after while standing two dynamic entry, and then he goes straight into, I think, silent entry one. I think it's silent entry one. It had kind of like a different hit spark um, than the move does right now, and the sound effect was a little bit different. I don't know if they've actually changed the move somehow, but... Uh, Lars is a character, we've talked about this before, who might need a little bit of help uh, to be stronger in this game, and a stance transition that might give him access to mix-ups is a good way of doing that. It's better than an implementation of like a new move or anything, uh, because it can really uh, have an impact on how the character strategizes. Um, and it's one of those things, again, where it's going to be really hard to say how it's going to impact the character before we have uh, complete frame data, but it's uh, great to know that they've looked at Lars and who knows he might have more changes and he might uh, end up being a stronger character in this game, so great news for him. The next thing I picked up on was a new while standing move from uh, Gigas. It looks like while standing 4-1 or maybe 4-2. Um, and if uh, you're unfamiliar with Gigas's frame data, his while standing 4 is actually not 11 frames, it's his 13 frame uh, while standing Punisher. He has 1 for 11, 
And so if they haven't changed the frame data of this move, then all it's going to mean is that Gigas has a new very powerful 13 frame while standing uh, block punisher. But that's actually pretty good because there's a lot of instances in this game where you want to have good um, 13 frame while standing punishment. Crimson Dawn from Kazumi is a great example. Uh, and a lot of uh, really important low pokes in this game that have that break point of 13 frames. And it's going to improve your matchup against characters who uh, abuse lows like that. So uh, if it's going to remain 13 frames, then all it means is that he got this new punish. But it's actually a pretty nice little buff uh, for Gigas. And uh, I hope they've uh, looked at him in a couple of other ways as well. But that's exciting news for the, the few of you out there who actually play Gigas. The next thing I saw was that uh, you can apparently reset your combos using Bloody Horn with Elisa after a Dragon Punch. Which makes sense because um, the three uh, meter characters that we have right now, Gigas, uh, sorry, Geese, Akuma and Elisa, two of them have these uh, insane uh, combos where they can almost like death combo you or sometimes actually death combo you with meter. And Elisa hasn't really gotten the same potential in terms of insane combos with her meter. And so this might be an attempt by the developers to bring her more in the direction of Akuma and uh, Geese. Which I think is kind of fair. She's definitely the weakest of those characters right now. Um, uh, who knows what's going to happen to her combo game uh, now that she has this. But if it's going to function kind of like a, you know an FADC for Akuma, then it's going to give her more potential for uh, long, really high damage combos. And maybe we're going to see some of these uh, crazy death combos coming out of Elisa with uh, two bars as well. Uh, I play her, I think she's definitely the most fun of those three characters to play, so uh, I don't mind her being buffed. She's not too powerful at the moment, but uh, if I'm going to be 100% honest here and just sprinkle in a little bit of uh, criticism, then I would say that I would rather actually prefer that Akuma and Geese's combo damage was brought down to a more sane level instead of having another character uh, boosted to their level, but uh, that's just me. Uh, then we saw that Steve has gotten himself a new Rage Drive. People have talked a lot about how Steve has uh, a weak Rage Drive and uh, he probably deserves to get a better one. Uh, it looks like it's a version of his Sonic Fang that's going to launch on hit, which is uh, kind of like a standard uh, Rage Drive. There are a couple of different archetypes of Rage Drive in this game, and this is the one where you get a mid uh, safe launcher on a move that would typically not be safe on block and so your option is that you can spend your rage on one very significant uh, whiff punish or you can gamble on it kind of gamble uh, I say gamble but the move is safe but if you do manage to interrupt something you get your launch and then you can combo and that becomes your turnaround mechanic as opposed to trying to hit your opponent with like a rage arch so uh, it makes sense Steve is not a character who needs his Rage Drive, he's actually very good uh, in spite of the fact that he doesn't have good Rage Drive right now. Um, so it's not a necessary buff, but his Rage Drive was kind of awful, so uh, maybe this is fine. And the last thing I picked up on in the trailer that I want to talk about before we talk about new characters is that uh, Bob apparently gets the uh, option of transitioning into Meatball after up for 1 plus 2. Uh, Meatball is kind of an awful stance that people don't use. It's kind of a mix-up stance. If this transition is going to work out so that he actually does get a good uh, mix-up uh, in, in this transition, then that's uh, cool for him. Up forward 1 plus 2 is definitely a good move for Bob. It's a move that all the good Bob players use a lot, especially at the wall. He gets a free mix-up between uh, the 1 plus 2 and the 4, the 4 being the safe high, and the uh, 1 plus 2 being the punishable mid knockdown and wall splat move. So, uh, nothing controversial. Bob is uh, already a good character, but he's not like overblown, so maybe he deserves some buffs as well. Enough about all of that. Let's get to the really juicy part. Let's talk about new characters. Now, the first thing to notice here, and the most uh, significant thing about the entire reveal, really, is that it looks like we're going to get six new characters in Season 2, which is a lot. Uh, I mean, Tekken 7 is not a game like Street Fighter where you can make a new character um, every week because a new character only has five moves. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm joking. They generally have about four moves. But uh, uh, in Tekken, it takes a lot of time to uh, adapt a legacy character for a new game and to design a new character because there's so much more to consider. 
And so I thought we were going to get two new characters, uh, maybe three, and I would have been very satisfied with three, but we're going to get double that. We're going to get six, which is uh, really, really big, and I'm super happy because the Tekken uh, train is just going to keep on rolling. Uh, the first reveal that we saw was Anna. I think a lot of us were expecting to see Anna. And uh, I'm happy about Anna because I always kind of liked her. The first thing to notice is her visual design, which is not super interesting if you're only interested in gameplay. But the thing about uh, Tekken and the sexy female characters, the exact same thing goes for Christy, is that uh, graphically Tekken has been a little bit awkward in the past because it's uh, limited by just the technology of its age. And these characters that are supposed to look really beautiful kind of look awkward and alien a lot of the time. But now that we're in this uh, super beautiful uh, game, Tekken 7, Anna really uh, just looks amazing and outshines a lot of the other uh, members of the cast with her visual design. I love that they gave her like a black tattered uh, wedding kind of dress to play off of Nina's white dress. And she's also gone a little bit emo. Maybe she was bit by Elisa, who knows, but uh, she looks a little bit more aggressive and fierce than she has before. But she looks amazing, and if we're going to talk about the moves that she has, uh, it looks like moves she's had in the past. She still has her manual low parry, which is a super cool move for her. If you watch my gameplay, you know that I love doing a lot of low parrying. And uh, she has a manual version where she puts her knee up, and if, she, uh, if you do a low into that, then instead of getting a low parry with a partial combo like you would normally, she actually just launches you for a full combo, which is really cool. It's a, it's a unique but fair and, and like cool mechanic for her that I really like. Um, we also saw her Rage Drive, and this is another archetype of Rage Drive. We talked about Steve's before. Another archetype of Rage Drive that you see is the spike move that you can use as a combo ender and then get guaranteed grounded damage to extend the uh, damage of a combo in the open. This is a great kind of uh, Rage Drive. We see similar things on uh, Asuka, on Heihachi, on uh, Dragonov. There are a couple of characters who have this. And they're typically very good, so it's uh, really cool to see that uh, Anna gets that. I haven't played a character yet who uh, uses that really, so it's fun for me. I'm definitely going to play Anna, by the way. I've played her before in Tekken Tag 2 and really liked her, so uh, it's going to be exciting. Anna has historically been a character who's uh, a little bit uh, of like a user-friendly, smaller move list version of Nina, which is very good because Nina's move list right now is kind of all over the place, a lot of strings that go in different directions, and you might call that advanced and cool, which it is, but it's also kind of annoying and uh, lacks a little bit of focus. And Anna has always been, a, you know, much more of a traditional Tekken character, you know, uh, jabs, mid pokes, uh, low pokes, with punishers, launchers, combos, and she doesn't, you know, do uh, unblockables and weird movement options all the time. Um, she she's more, you know, standard Tekken kind of character, which I love. Um, I love those uh, very sort of vanilla type characters because I think that's, <clears throat> you know, traditional Tekken. So uh, she's. Definitely uh, exciting and something that I'm going to look forward to. I think she's the first character that we're going to get. So when she comes out, there's going to be uh, guides and breakdowns and uh, combo videos and all the rest from me. So look forward to that. Uh, anything else about Anna? Well, the Rage Drive was uh, really cool. Um, I, one an annoying thing is that she throws her knives in all different directions, but then they all hit the same target in front of her. But whatever. It looked really cool. And then we had Lei. Uh, he, his face looks different. Uh, he looks like he's had plastic surgery or something, I don't know. But the visual design, again, is amazing. Uh, Tekken still impresses me uh, to this day with how beautiful it looks visually. And I'm pretty sure that Lei is not a character that they've actually completed yet because they didn't show us all that much at all, but they showed us that he has a different rage drive depending on which uh, animal stance he's in. He has all these different, you know, Shaolin uh, animal stances like Tiger and Mantis, and he gets a different rage drive for each one, which is crazy. Uh, Lei has always been a character with a big diverse move pool, many different stance transitions. He's kind of like a crazy, uh, you know, uh, dodge kind of character, evasive. And so they definitely haven't dumbed him down if he has five different rage drives. So the lay fans are going to be excited about that. I've never played him before, so maybe this is going to be my first opportunity to learn, uh, which is exciting. 
I just hope we don't end up with an, another Xiaoyu uh, in this game because I think that's the last thing we, we need right now. Uh, but it looks fun and super cool. And then uh, the big enchilada at the end, the least expected, I think, guest character we could have imagined, Negan from The Walking Dead is going to be in uh, Tekken 7, which is so weird, but really cool. I mean, I don't watch The Walking Dead, I don't watch any uh, TV shows really, it's not a, a thing that I do, but I am aware of The Walking Dead. I have read uh, some parts of the comic, actually, and my sister is obsessed with uh, The Walking Dead, so I've watched it. Uh, with her back in the days when I used to live in in the UK, uh, so I know about Negan. He's a he's a cool character, but it's it's continuing this theme of the guest characters being the big bad boss guys, and uh, you know he has his favorite uh, baseball bat with uh, barbed wire on it. Uh, I think he calls it Lucille, um, and it's going to be kind of cool to have a Tekken character who smashes people to death with a baseball bat. It's not something we've had so far. We've had like awkward swords and stuff, but um, it has the potential to look and feel amazing. I just hope that he doesn't get uh, weird bar mechanics and stuff and, you know, that he can fucking FADC and stuff, that he's just a Tekken character with a bat because that would look uh, so much cooler. I wonder what they're going to do for a stage, if there's going to be like a big zombie stage uh, or something where the walls are made of zombies or something, that could be really cool. Uh, but it's a, it's a surprising and ex exciting uh, guest character and because the color of his panel was kind of different I'm guessing that the three characters that we haven't seen yet might actually just be uh, legacy reveals uh, and there's only one guest character but who knows we can't say for sure uh, maybe even Namco doesn't know yet but uh, they probably do though anyway I think that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video um, Super exciting. I don't know how long I've been talking, but uh, I, I just went into kind of a, a mania because it's so much fun. I'm just going to sit down and play Tekken now because it's what I feel like doing. Uh, comment, uh, talk about this uh, content, talk about how excited you are, talk about EVO. And uh, I'll see you guys again uh, in the next video that we're going to make very soon. But uh, what a great day for Tekken 7. Uh, what an amazing day. Uh, and uh, uh, what a great year to look forward to. Uh, thank you so much uh, for now, and I'll see you guys again uh, very soon. Bye-bye.